There's an adage in the defensive world that you can't count on luck, but sometimes luck counts. Today's video is brought to us by Firearms Legal Protection. Firearms Legal Protection is a legal defense program for lawful gun owners with a 24-7 emergency hotline and plans designed specifically for self-defenders. They are offering a discount on their plan to ASP fans, so hit the link in the description for that. Hi everyone, this is John with today's active self-protection lesson out of McAllen, Texas in the United States. Here we're going to see an armed robbery where, thankfully, an off-duty officer or two are around to end the threat. Normal day at a jewelry store in the mall. You can see the guard kind of hanging out and all of a sudden a bunch of guys are going to come in as robbers. And this actually sparked a panic at this mall and reports of an active shooter, which wasn't, and the police ended up having to put that down, but boy did they respond in a hurry. Look at this dad on the right hand side shielding his family from these armed robbers, all seven of them, and what a crazy thing. When he gets an opportunity, they get the heck out of the danger zone. Now we're not able to see a ton at this point, but what I wanna pay attention to right now is how long this goes on. And they're even gonna actually, the, the person who originally posted this, who works in this mall, I think actually at this store, uh, is gonna speed it up in a minute. We can only see one of the robbers here who's holding the guard, who's laying down behind the counter there at gunpoint and paying attention to everybody else to kinda see what's going on here. And, and now it finally speeds up. And think about this, tick, tick, tick. Another guy runs out, finds his opportunity there. And now uh, this one bad guy here, he's not gonna let anybody else run out, so he's kinda trying to guard both. And it's kinda funny, he's doing that like a, it feels like a second grader on the playground, you know what I mean? Spreading his hands out like that and seeing if he can get inside any of these things as well. And this has taken a long time and everyone else is responding to that. And I think he's paying attention to the time there and saying, hey, what do we got? And now it's gonna go down as you see a guard run by and now he's gonna come and draw his gun. Now look at what happens. The, gu the guard did not see this guy with a gun in his hand at the beginning. Now this other guy's a plain clothes. I think a plain clothes, not a, a CCW. I'm having a hard time finding the story who finally sees him and another plain clothes shows up and they end it. Boy, I'm sure glad that came out as well as it did. If you appreciate the content that you get here at Active Self Protection, would you do me a favor? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss a lesson. Out of this one, I wanna talk about the danger of transitional spaces. I also wanna talk as a first responder, as a self-defender, the danger of not knowing how many bad guys that you might face and about working as a team to stop the threat. We wanna think first here about transitional spaces. Pay attention to the guard here who's just kinda of hanging out and I look, you know, looking on his right hip. I don't see a firearm. I don't think this guy is armed. But still, awareness in transitional space is incredibly important. Any place that allows an ambush with an easy attack. And, and friends, I get it. He's not, you know, really switched on at this point because it's inside a mall and I wouldn't normally consider that a crazy transitional space. But you see how fast the attack happens where you had no warning whatsoever. When you're in these kind of transitional spaces, you do gotta pay attention to your surroundings, friend. Now let's pay attention to how many guys come in. You had the first guy come in and now there's two, three, four, five, the guy in the red, and six, and they're all wearing masks. And what you're gonna see at the end here is we're having six attackers and then come right through a seventh. Boy, you wanna talk about a lot of multiple attackers there. And if you're a defender, you better pay attention to what's going on because you gotta know that there's a plus one. Now, I just think on the right-hand side, look at this dad over here on the right in the checkered shirt who grabs his family up and shields his wife and his child with his body. I think that's incredibly courageous. When there's danger out there, he's the one who wants to take it and hold them in tight. And I think parents protecting their children and husbands protecting their wives is just a fantastic thing. And that just shows a great heart. And, and I think that that's incredibly brave of him to do so. But even more important here is he is going to start paying attention and looking for an opportunity to get out of there. And that's really wise. And that's what he does right here. Looking for a chance, looking for an opportunity, seeing if nobody's paying attention to him so they can get out of the danger zone. Incredibly important way to survive an armed robbery is to keep your opportunity, keep looking for your chance, look for your counter ambush, and rather than counter ambushing here, if possible, get out of the danger zone. And that's exactly what they do is they find their time and get out of the danger zone because, you know, counter ambushing seven guys would have been a big deal. Now, there's some interesting stuff about this one. Again, go read the news stories that we've linked in the description. But these guys had planned this for a couple of weeks, had actually come across the border illegally into uh, Texas where they were at in order to plan this event. And then they were planning on robbing the store and getting the heck out of there. Well, they're all facing charges now. That's not gonna be a big deal. But it doesn't, uh, doesn't make the robbery any worse. But the fact that they came over the border just for that, I think is pretty significant. And look at how long it takes, man. 
just forever. You're your own first responder and you're the only one that's coming for those first several minutes. The fact that this lasted as long as it did is very rare in armed robberies and that's why the response was coming in when it finally did and they had time to do that. Most armed robberies would have been long over by now and the police would only show up after the robbery is over to make the reports and make sure everybody else is recovering okay and get medical help there. Now, when we see the guy finally come in, I wanna pay attention to the fact that he rushed in there and I get that, draws his gun to start seeing what's going on and seeing what the bad guys are doing, but pay attention to the fact that he did not see what was going on in his space. And so there is a guy to his right, our left, who is behind him with a gun and has shown deadly intent by pointing his gun at people. Friends, if somebody was shooting, if there was actual shooting going on, now there were reports of an active shooter going on, so I get that in this case, then you gotta rush in there and just hope for the best. But seeing what's going on in your world and not allowing blind corners is an incredibly important part of rushing into a threat. Now, most self-defenders, CCWers, are not gonna rush into a threat. This is more law enforcement, more security. But if you do, because you got loved ones in there, you gotta recognize, you gotta check your angles and see what's going on and not get ambushed by the, the trailing accomplice. Now, now, this last guy here, the guy in the orange shirt, does see the trailing accomplice. You see him here as he's checking his corners and looking for what's going on in his world. Very smart there and seeing what was going on. He immediately points his gun at that guy and I think that was wise. Why? Because that guy is wearing a mask you know you say well he can't see his gun but he can't see his mask and he knows there's an armed robbery and that guy's just standing there and he can't see both his hands so he gets his gun up and on target and challenges now he could have shot that guy i think there without too much problems you know from a legal perspective but he challenges him instead and because the guy gives up then he you know takes him at gunpoint rather than shoots him now finally we see the the third guy show up with a firearm another off duty would be my guess or maybe a ccw holder and now they got to work as a team they got seven guys there and you got to work on not only holding these guys but recognizing there's a huge police presence coming because of this and you got to make sure that you don't get shot so make sure you're working as a team communicating well on the phone with 911 once you get the guys kind of secured so then that way you don't get shot by responding officers so all in all there's a ton of lessons here from not only people who are unarmed and need to get out of the danger zone but armed citizens security police officers as well about stopping this kind of an armed robbery and covering your asp